Good morning folks, this is Don at Affordable Desert Living and today is a super special day for me. I get to talk to you about my solar setup. Wow, I've been planning this for a while and um, I just wanted to take you along for the journey and show you all the components I used for this solar uh, build and also uh, give you details that might help you creating your own solar setup. Oops, a little bit of distraction here. There's birds at my solar wildlife pond. So anyway, back on task. So I'll be going through all the details, including showing the location I picked and the direction I picked that will best allow solar here on my property. And also I'm gonna be building a ground mount, not a roof type solar. And so you'll get to see that from literally the ground up. <laughs> so let's roll up our sleeves and get going. And we'll start out with working on our ground mount. Lots of hard work, but a lot of fun too. In my area, the optimum solar array position will be 10 degrees east of due south. I'll be placing eight panels that are each 40 by 68 inches in size on a wooden ground mount that I will construct myself. In the beginning, I wasn't quite sure how they should be arranged. In the end, I chose to place them horizontally, two panels deep in a row of four. I figured the standard fence post hole digger that you dig by hand wouldn't be very useful. This soil is so difficult. So I dug these about 18 inches deep and I compromised for strength purposes by making them wide. And as a result, they used a lot of cement. Not the most frugal way to do this, but considering how important the solar setup is, I figured it was the right choice. So a little archaic, folks, um, but uh, since it's only me here, uh, those two by sixes make a pretty good tripod. It takes a little extra work to have to uh, pound them on with the four inch spikes and remove them and kind of move them around a bit like tripod legs. But for a one man job, it seems to work pretty good. The orange string you see here is stretched from one end of the framework to the other and used as a guide to keep the 4x4 posts in a straight line. Then I'll just take this mixing stick and kind of do like I've seen women do in East Africa where they're grinding corn. I really don't know how to grind corn like they do. They work really hard. A lot harder than I do, that's for sure. Now, of course, now we'll shore it up around the post.
Well, we're back from Bisbee with more post hole mix cement, and uh, it doesn't unload itself, so I better uh, get going and unload the little Toyota pickup, quote unquote pickup. I think eight is the maximum I'd ever put in that little car. I already replaced the shocks and struts, so eight is enough. Using the handy 1x4 trim board, quick clamps, and my level, I now can mark and duplicate the height of all the 4x4s for the entire row. Really cool. Now it's as simple as marking the post and cutting it to match all of the others. So I'm going to use uh, six four foot four by fours to be on the low end of that solar array. Since they're each eight feet long, it's as simple as cutting the four by fours each in half. There's times to be frugal and times to go, hmm, maybe I should get a sawhorse. <laughs> so what I did here folks, uh, a little unconventional maybe, but simply I didn't want to spend the extra money to uh, purchase lumber to create forms for the base of the cement support for lack of better words, probably uh, footings or something else is the better word. Um, so I had this leftover star foam, so I cut it to shape, and I'm supporting it with these cinder blocks so that then I can pour cement in there and um, create some extra support for these 4x4s. So I've never done this before, don't know whether it'll work, so uh, wish me luck. And the other thing I like to do is reuse and repurpose things. Um, these are bed mattress springs. So you should be able to see the springs down in there. And uh, I hope they'll add some extra support. So while the supports are drying, it gives me time to begin on the bottom row of 4x4 posts and do some work on them. Once the cement was dry, 
these styrofoam forms work beautifully and things actually turned out okay. Now on cement mix number three, this powder mix is mortar and allows me to just smooth things out. Last bag of the day to my cement bag desert sumac tree, a great bag holder. They didn't turn out very uniform, but extremely sturdy, and that was my goal. I added some paint to make things look better. Well, the good thing is the real hard work is over with um, and uh, I'm really, really happy with the results. These posts are super, super sturdy. Um, they're not going anywhere, so, so that's super. So in the next video, folks, what I'll do is frame that in to create the place for the solar panels to rest on there. So thank you very much for watching, and I really, really appreciate you being here. Love the comments, can hardly wait for them, as always. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, you'll want to subscribe and see how all this turns out. And we'll see you on the next video.